Hey guys, it's Nate, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be finishing up part 5, which is the keyboard tray that's going to go underneath my epoxy river desk. Hope you enjoy. To start, I needed to plan out all the components that were going to go into the desk, so I went to the drawing board. I began to draw out the design that I wanted on this new slab of English walnut that we picked up. I started by cutting the slab in half in order to get workable sizes of wood. I then began to cut two large pieces of one of the halves of the slabs from the initial rough cut. I used a table saw in order to parallel the initial circular saw rough cut. Because of the orientation of the slab, I needed to make another angled cut on the second piece of wood in order to make sure that both pieces that I was going to be using had the same thickness. Here I'm squaring up the edges on the chop saw. We then planed one side down on each of the boards in order to make sure that we had a flat side to work off of when we are going to resaw on the bandsaw. And here you can start to see the beautiful grain after the planing. Here on the table saw, we begin rough sawing the plywood sections that the keyboard is actually going to be sitting on. I then use my circular saw to cross cut them to the lengths that I want them. Here I'm creating a form on the bandsaw in order to make a cut so that my knees have room to go underneath the keyboard tray. After sketching the designs onto my plywood pieces, I'm ready to make the cut with my jigsaw. I put both pieces on top of each other before making the cut in order to make sure that both boards, top and bottom, had the identical cutout. If you haven't already and you like this video, please be sure to click the like button underneath the video and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. We then moved over to resaw on the bandsaw those two large pieces of lumber that we made from the English walnut slab. I then ran all four pieces that we just made on the resaw through the planer so that all four pieces were the same thickness. Then I moved on to paint the plywood sections black in order to match the legs that were going to be put on the desk. I needed a small section of English walnut to separate the upper and lower plywood sections, so that is what I'm cutting here. Here I'm making angled cuts in order to match the legs angled section in the front. I then move on to some rough sanding to get rid of any blade marks on any of the pieces of lumber that I'm sanding here. However, this will not be the finished sanding as I still have a bunch of work to do on each of the pieces. Here's the second coat of paint on the plywood sections. Now I can move to focus on the joinery and where to cut the dados on my pieces. I set up a stop block to make it easy to cut the smaller pieces with the dado.
I then move to the larger pieces and cut the dados in them as well. The two face pieces need two dados and that will become more clear on why in the later aspect of the video. Now that the paint is dry, I start setting up the keyboard slides on the lower, bigger plywood piece. There will be two on each side, four in total. You have to be very careful to make sure all four drawer slides are parallel or else it will not slide correctly. Since there was an angle to the face piece, the spacer piece did not line up completely correctly, so an angled cut on the chop saw had to be done. As you can see here, the joinery is much better. Because the initial spacer pieces weren't long enough, I had to cut out an extra piece in order to fill out the length. I then began to plan on cutting the face pieces to their final dimension. Here is where I learned a very crucial lesson. If a piece begins to fall, do not go and try to catch it, especially when a blade is still running. I set up another stop block in order to cut the spacer pieces to their final height. Now that the pieces were in their final forms, I used a round over bit on my router in order to smooth out all the edges. The dado definitely came in handy for these smaller pieces in order to get a grip when using the router. Here I begin to sand any defects or burn marks that had taken place with the use of the router. It was exciting to see my pieces finally come together in this dry fit. I then used a clear polyurethane coat to finish and protect all the pieces. This finish will allow for a lot of wear resistance, but also did a great job in bringing out the grain of the English walnut. And now for the best part, the glue up. This process happened over a couple days in order to make sure no pieces were interfering with each other during the glue up process. Here we are measuring to make sure everything is square before gluing up the two side pieces. Using square clamps, we were able to ensure that both side pieces stay at 90 degrees while the glue began to set up. I took off all the clamps from the day before and were finally able to glue on the face pieces. I only glue in the top dado slot because the bottom dado slot is used so that the bottom piece of plywood fits into there correctly. However, the bottom dado is not glued. To add some rigidity, we cut another small plywood slot that's going to fit onto the back section of the keyboard tray. Here I am securing that plywood piece into place.
I was worried about the force that was going to be applied on the face pieces when using the keyboard tray, so I made a small section to add to the rigidity. The small pieces fit into the upper dado section. Now that the keyboard tray was all set, it was finally time to start planning on where the legs were going to attach to the side pieces. And now came the moment of truth. Success. We then loaded it up to take it back to my place. Once we added the top, the desk was finally complete. This project turned out amazing, and I'm super glad if you watched this all the way from the start to finish because you know how much work went into this. If you like these videos and you want to see more, I'm planning on doing more projects like this in the future. So be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.